In the following scenario, we illustrate how you can explore the emotions and concerns of somebody who is in himself healthy, but whose partner has got a major and life-threatening illness. The techniques of exploration and acknowledgement are clearly illustrated and may be helpful in what is potentially a very difficult interview. Okay, Mr. Fraser, um, I guess we're new to each other. The receptionist didn't tell me what the problem was, so you tell me. The guy that I, and the, my partner. Yes, sure. He has AIDS. Oh, okay. Uh, is 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 that new, or is uh, is he has he had that for some time, or what? What's uh, tell me the background? Oh, the hell of a surprise to me. Oh, I never knew anything about this. It, uh, you know, it, you can't be a gay male in this day without talking about it. Cool. He never told me. I, I had no idea up until a few weeks ago, and he just sprung it on me. What, what happened a, couple, uh, a few weeks ago that, that you say he sprang it on you? Well, he started getting thicker. Yeah. Um, it seemed just like a bad cold or bronchitis at first. Yeah. Um, he seemed a little more worried this time than he had been when he'd had previous colds or something. And so he, he went back to the coast to visit his mother, and I <sighs> just told me over the phone that he had AIDS. Oh, so if I've got this right, he had a sort of chest infection, and he was, uh, as you say, uh, uh, over with his mother on, on the coast. And what what happened? It was it was a d pneumonia or something developed from the wrong. Yeah, I or something like that. and he has a, oh. I guess he has about this many T cells left. Oh, okay. So that's as far as you know. That was the time when the diagnosis was made, and this yeah. is the first you've heard of it. And you heard of it over the phone. He, you must have been knocked sideways by that. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm hurt. Yeah. I'm angry. And I'm scared shitless. Yes. Now, let's take all of those in order. You're, you're hurt because... He didn't tell me. He must have known. I mean, God knows how long he's been been positive. We've been together for two years, and he's never told me anything about it in that time. <sighs> so he was concealing from you the fact he must have been HIV positive. Yeah. He must have known that, but he never told you. Section three is all about how to deal with those difficult but not rare situations when the patient has a hidden agenda. In other words, those consultations when the patient ostensibly has one set of problems, but those don't seem to be the real issues. There are several clues as to the presence of a significant hidden agenda, and you're going to see examples of all of them in the scenarios in this section. Perhaps the most important of those clues is a mismatch between the way you've described the situation to the patient and the way they seem to be responding particularly if the situation is not very serious, and yet the patient does not respond to that reassuring information. That may mean that there's something lurking behind it. Also, if the patient describes what seem to be quite serious medical problems, but does not seem concerned, sometimes called la belle indifférence, that may be a sign of a hidden agenda too. Another indication that all is not as it appears is discordance between the patient's words and his or her non-verbal communication, including body language. If there is marked variance between what the patient is telling you and what the patient's non-verbal language is telling you, there may well be a hidden agenda. the end of section 5, the difficult problem of how to discuss the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. Since this condition obviously affects mental functioning, it is extremely difficult to discuss the diagnosis honestly and openly, 
and you will find in this scenario approaches to that very difficult situation. Finally, in section three, here's an interview with a patient who seems to have multiple interrelated problems, both medical and social, and they're building up to cause a big problem with the control of his diabetes. If you didn't begin to unpick the strands of this, you would end up with a patient whose diabetes control gets worse and who has avoidable medical consequences like retinopathy and nephropathy and neuropathy.